Hello and welcome to the first edition of the Avid Screencast after a long summer hiatus. My name is Christian Förster and from this week on, the shows will be coming out like clockwork again. After all, I'm German. And uh, this week we'll take control of Avid's effects processing. You know how sometimes an effect you add to an upper track affects the tracks below, even though that's not what you wanted? Now this is what happened to Charlotte and she emailed me and what she wanted to do and what we're going to reproduce now is she wanted to have a, a simple background and add two images on top of that. So let's quickly add two images like these two. And then she wanted to add a picture in picture. So let's go to tools, effect palette, the blend category and add a picture in picture to both of these tracks. Now you see there's a weird graphical glitch and I have no idea why that is in the timeline. But I'm not on the latest patch either so I hope this will go away when I install the latest patch. So now we have a picture in picture. Let's just leave it at the default uh, settings. And now she wanted to transition between those two shots. So again, let's open the effect palette and um, add a push transition. Right to left. And as you can see now, what happens is the background gets the push, push transition as well. And that is of course not what she wanted. She wanted uh, the picture in picture images to transition. So how do we solve this problem? Now the general rule of thumb is if an effect that you added affects a track below that you didn't want it to affect, uh, the answer lies in nesting. Now what is nesting? Nesting is if you step into a track by using the step in button and then apply an effect on a level below the uppermost effect. So we need to apply the approach transition, which is the one that we don't want to affect the lower track to a lower level. And there are different ways to do it, and we'll do it uh, in two different ways. The first way to do it is generally the best way if you've already built the effect and realize, oh geez, something went wrong. So what we'll do is we'll remove the picture and picture effects now these have the default setting, we don't need to save them to a bin, otherwise I'd recommend you save them to a bin. So remove those and just mark everything on track two. And now use the collapse command. It's up here or it's in your command palette or it's uh, on your keyboard maybe. <laughs> on mine it's shift C. So. What this does is uh, it applies a submaster effect to everything you marked. And if you step into that, you have your original footage. So now we have basically one clip that has the two shots and the transition in them. And what we'll do now is apply the picture in picture effect after the fact. And we'll do that by holding down the option or the alt key and dragging it on top of the submaster. And lo and behold, it does what we want it to do. The transition now only affects the picture in picture effect. And if we step into the pip, you can see there's the submaster. Again, we'll have to step in. And there is our transition. Now the second way to go about building this effect is to think about it beforehand. <laughs> so let's remove pretty much everything but the background. Now we have pretty much the empty video track too and we'll add the picture in picture right now. This will add the picture in picture to filler Looks weird right now, 
but we'll remedy that right next and we'll step into the pip. And what we'll do now is build the sequence of the two shots inside the nest. So edit in the two shots and now add the transition that you wanted to use. In this case it was a right to left transition. The result is basically the same except that you don't have the submaster effect if you step out. So one less stepping out kind of thing. But the end result is the same. Another scenario where nesting is needed in effects is uh, when you're doing color correction with, you know, effects. So let's try this out as well. I'll just edit in another pip. But this time without the transition because basically I don't need the transition here. So again, I create a pip. And let's just say I wanted to make uh, the image within the pip black and white. So I'll go into color correction, select video track two because that's the only one I wanted to affect. And crank the saturation down to zero. And as you can see immediately, the background is also affected, which is not what I wanted to achieve. So let's undo that, get rid of the color correction. And now again, you have to step in to the video track that you want to affect without affecting the one below it. Again, turn the saturation down, step out of it, and there you go. You've only affected the effects layer and not the one below it. So thinking about how you stack up your effects, uh, you know, makes a lot of sense when working in Avid because of the way it processes it. But once you get the hang of it and think about, oh, something happens that I didn't want to happen, I probably have to nest something. You get to go most of the time anyway. All right, that's basically it. Thanks for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com. We can also watch past episodes. Also, you can subscribe in iTunes, of course. If you have any comments or suggestions like future show topics, though I did get a lot of nice feedback uh, on the Facebook page, and I will incorporate uh, a lot of the suggestions for show topics in future shows, but if you have any more, drop me a line at mail at screencast.com or just comment on the website. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash screencast, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash screencast. And if you'd like what kinds of things I do in my day job, check out editguy.de. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.